welcome to my channel. Now I went shopping this morning and I found this little pumpkin, um, well sort of gourd really isn't it, not a pumpkin, um, but it's just the perfect shape isn't it, just lovely and round and pumpkin shape with that and super little top on it, but you can see how small it is, but I thought that was just too cute to leave in the shop and not have a go at drawing in autumn. So we're going to have a go at drawing this and then, so I'll talk through the drawing and then I will come back and put some watercolour on just quite quickly at the end. But we'll talk about the drawing really. So I'm going to sit that in front of me, out of the way. I thought it looks a little bit boring on its own. So I would just pop, I just popped outside the door and found this leaf. And I'm just going to pop them next to each other just to give it a bit of a, a background and a bit more of a shape. Okay, so to begin with, just look at the basic shapes don't worry about doing every little detail to begin with just look at the overall shape of the top of the pumpkin first of all which is so do a nice loose ellipse move your arm and then look at the base see how deep it is a little bit deeper than that actually compared to the top And you can rub some of these guidelines out later but it just get that nice overall shape of the pumpkin in and then look at where the leaf comes out about halfway up the pumpkin so a little bit further up than that and then out towards us with the tip of it there so we can come back and get the detail in just get those shapes where they're going to be now we'll look at the center where the stalk is and how long the stalk is it doesn't quite come to the top and obviously this is going to depend how far away you've put your pumpkin from you um, and at what angle you're sitting and what angle you're looking at it the main thing when you're drawing when you're doing still lives and things like this is that you keep the same position um, and you don't move the objects and you don't move yourself and then you're always looking at it from the same position especially if you go away and come back to it so it's got a little bit of a kink in it, this stem, so we'll get the stem in. And now we'll look at the shapes of these segments. So the very sort of, I don't know if bulbous is the right word, coming over. And look at the shape at the bottom. So they go into sort of a bit of a triangle there. And look at the negative shapes so this shape here against the table I'm doing this quite quickly just so that you're not going to get too bored whilst I'm doing it um, but you'll put a lot more time in than me so again look at the shape against the table here so that you get that line right so the next segment we can hardly see any of it, the actual base of it, it's coming right down behind this one and you can see how that first line I put in is giving us a nice guideline to work to and I'll perhaps come back and put some ink onto that actually just so that you can see a bit more clearly where I've gone with these lines but doing it quite quickly and this one's just a nice very symmetrical shape there I'll just round that off slightly So I didn't count these segments before I set off, I just set off putting them in and of course the person that has your drawing in front of them later on isn't going to have your little gourd in front of them so you, they're not going to know if you've got run out of space and added an extra segment. These are actually fitting in quite nicely so they're all, they're all going to fit in where they should be. This one peeps down below. So before I carry on to the leaf, I'm just going to put some ink on that so that you can see it better. Just one moment. Okay, so this is a medium size um, ink pen. I'll just put a little bit of detail in, but it's a little bit sort of... It's got some, um, I don't know, where it's been cut at the end, it's got some dots and dashes and things. So let's just get a bit of that texture in whilst we're drawing the outline. Particularly here, it comes out towards you. You've got this is where the the stem of the plant's been, where it's been attached to the plant, and it's sort of shriveling because it's dried. So 
plenty of texture in there and it's much wider at the base. So I've simplified it a bit, I'm not putting loads of detail in it because we can, the main thing with this is getting these nice autumn colours in really. And keep it nice and round and get these nice curves in. So I'm at an awkward angle because I'm trying to avoid hitting the tripod. It's always a problem when you're drawing. I'm trying to film at the same time. Not a problem you'll have. You'll just be able to move your paper around. If it's easier to do these lines with your paper upside down or whatever, then move it around. Don't uh, get your arm in too awkward a position. Okay, so that's the perhaps not as just as fat as we've got him now this this line I've done wrong it should come down more here we can't really alter that now I've done it in ink but never mind make, make that shaded so we could do that whilst we're here put a little bit of shadow in in places where you think it's you know it's particularly dipping in here so we've got a bit of shadow so whilst we're doing this just pop some of the shades in in between each of these it's quite quite dark where it's going in but most of the shadow is actually down this side and that's going to help us get rid of that line that we made by mistake get some of the veins in as well sort of we've got these veins going helps make that bulbous shape of it and keep this shadow all to this side we've got the light the windows behind so the lights here make the lines of your shadow go in the direction that the pumpkins going as well you might want to just do your shading with your, your paint you might not want to put it in with your pen you might want to keep your pen lines more simple than this or just Gives us a good starting point for getting those shades in. It starts to make give it that 3D look. Just as we come round here, leaving this all this up here where the light from the window is. Okay, so we'll just have to ignore this bit where I've got wrong gone wrong here, and we'll move on to the leaf. So it's very dry this leaf, so it's still got very crispy, crunchy edges. With little bits of spikes and snarls and a little curl at the end but again the person looking at your painting later isn't going to have this exact leaf in front of them so don't get bogged down in um, worrying about every little nook, you know nick in it just curling over on the edge there so obviously they're going to be torn they've fallen from the tree they've been there all summer they're not going to be perfect and just have it coming towards you there there's a little curl in it there where it's bent over and again it's bent over there and then it disappears under there so we'll also just put some of these veins in you can see how the pen's not always covering in a, in a you know a complete line depending on how much pressure I'm putting on it part of that's because it's a textured watercolour paper rather than a smooth drawing paper so you know the, the pen isn't always touching if you just do it nice and lightly so now I've got a lot of shadow under here where the pumpkin is shading the leaf so I'm going to make that quite dark and I'm going to make this line here a lot darker because there's no light getting to that leaf under there Again, try and make your 
the lines of the shadow go in the direction of the object that you're drawing. Or you can use cross hatching like this, whichever, just to you know give us that indication that that's really dark in that area. Okay. Here as well. So like I say, you might prefer to do your tones with your paint, but I think I like to get some in early on so I can see where things are going. Now, also at this stage, we want to put some shadow on the table underneath, um, which is going to ground it. So it's very, very dark here. So I'm going to go completely black with that shape there underneath and in between the leaf and the pumpkin. I'm calling it a pumpkin. It's actually probably a gourd, isn't it, really? Just, it's just that it's such a perfect baby pumpkin shape. Again, I'm going to try and keep that line there quite crisp. The edge of the leaf. And it's a little bit raised off the table there, so it's casting quite a shadow underneath. And more out this way. And here the shadow isn't touching the leaf because that part of the leaf isn't touching the table. So how much time you spend on your actual drawing compared to your paintings up to you and how much detail you go into. I'm just going to leave it quite simple like this um, and then pop some colour on with the watercolour. Yeah, I think that's enough pen work. I'm going to leave that. So just even though it's a water fast pen uh, and it's light fast, you do want to leave it a few minutes before you get your eraser and rub those lines out or before you add any water to it. So we'll just leave that a few minutes to dry before we put the watercolour on. Okay, so I'll let that dry and I've rubbed out, out the pencil lines and whilst, that was, whilst I was doing that I've made some colours up. So I've got some cadmium yellow, cadmium orange, quinacridine gold and yellow ochre to begin with. So, and I'm not going to wet the paper first, I'm just going to start and paint straight onto the paper. So, to begin with, I'm going to go for, let me think, I'm just going to do the whole pumpkin with this, this gold, I think, to begin with, and then put the oranges into it. So, I'm just going to cover the whole thing. So, they're not very concentrated washes, these, quite a lot of water in them. So we've got the drawing already there and we've got the tones already there with that bit of shadow that we did. So really this is just to add a touch of colour. So we're not going to be doing loads of painting. Just adding these colours to make it nice and autumn-y. So you have to paint round the, the stem which is a different colour. This is just a synthetic round brush and I'm just trying to see what number it is, I'm not sure, a five or a six, something like that. Okay, so we've got the whole thing painted and it's all still wet and while it's still wet we're going to put some more yellows and oranges into it. 
So it seems to be more orange down the centre of each little sort of segment. So pop these um, cadmium orange into there. And have more at the base where it's more in shadow. And let these colours mix on the paper. Now that's quite wet at the moment I do want to add some more colour to that but I'm just going to leave it and do a little bit on the leaf while that's just drying off a touch. So when I come to the leaf I'm going to start that with yellow underneath with the cadmium yellow. And don't worry about the two colours touching here and running into each other, that really doesn't matter. Because they're all autumn colours and they're all going to be in... You can see there's some red in there now, but it doesn't matter at all. Because you're going to see those colours in leaves at this time of year anyway. So you need a brush with a nice point on it to get to the edges of these leaves. And this is just a cheap practice paper um, and it's not a very heavy one at all. So. This is another reason why it's sort of running and cockling a little bit. So you would find it easier with a more professional heavy paper. And of course when you need to practice you don't want to be spending lots of money on superior papers really. Okay so just set off with the yellow there and then I'm going to use the same yellow and come back to the pumpkin because if we look at it, I'll pick it up again in a minute and show you, it's much more yellow than it is orange actually um, and I think I've overdone it a bit with the reddy colour of that cadmium orange so I've come back and I'm going to put some more of this cadmium yellow into it and just let it mix on the paper and of course this is just increasing the strength of the paint and a really nice depth of colour. So there where it's puddling a bit because of this paper cockling slightly. I have got it fastened down, but like I say, it's only a cheap one. Um, just look where it's cockling and just drag it out a little bit with your brush in the direction that the, the object's going. Okay, so I'm going to come back to the leaf again now, and I need to get some green, because it's still got a touch of green in it. So I'm going to go for the sap green. And keep it nice and thick so it doesn't bleed out too much. You could actually use it probably straight off the pan if you wanted. And it's more where the veins are. And just again let, let the colours mix on the paper. And then the other colour that it's still got in there is quite a lot of rusty brown. So I'm going to make up some burnt sienna, nice and thick, and add to it a little bit of burnt umber to make it a bit darker. It's got that rich red of the burnt sienna for the autumn colour, but making it a bit darker with the umber. And that's sort of all around the edges where it's been damaged and in between the veins 
on the tips You can see it's drying out a little bit here, but it doesn't actually matter because that gives you a bit of variety, having some harder lines where it's where you're putting the paint on to dry paint there. Bit of variety in the line. So we need to go around that edge where it's bent over, just so that we know that that's where the leaf is twisted. And whilst we've still got that nice and wet, I'm going to add to that same bit without adding any more water to my brush, some more of the burnt umber with a tiny touch of ultramarine just to get a really nice dark colour that's a much thicker paint concentration than we've just been putting on and just put that where it's the darkest. So it helps give us a little bit of texture indicating where that leaf's damaged. One or two sort of spots as well. And I think we'll leave, leave the leaf now. And whilst I've still got that dark colour on my palette, I'll just add a little bit around this stem where it's much darker and down at the base where it's in shade. Particularly around here. And again, following the shape of that little pumpkin. I don't think it needs too much more doing to it. I think I'm just going to get a dryish brush now and just lift off one or two little bits where the light is up here. We've just lost one or two sort of highlights, like I said, the where the light is coming through the window. Just give it a bit more contrast there and on the top here. And that's going to help keep the shape as well of those, I don't know what you call them, segments. But you must, must obviously do this while it's still wet. You can do it when it's dry, if you've got a good paper and a good brush. And now we'll come to the little stalk. I'm just looking down here, actually, this one's just tidying up. I'm just gonna wet this as well. So with the little stalk, that's what I got the yellow ochre for. I thought it was sort of that kind of color. And I don't think we need to add a lot of extra colour in there because we can just let the, um, you know, we've got the ink there to indicate the, the shapes of that. It's a little bit lighter on the top. Again, we need to get that highlight. Keep that highlight there as well. That's just where the paint's running down. Okay, so you get the idea, just adding the colours and letting them 
move together on the paper. It's just a few, well not a few because we use more perhaps than I would normally but because of the time of year you want to get those nice deep colours in, uh, rich colours should I say. So I'm just thinking now looking at it do we need a background but I think what I'll do is I'll let it completely dry and if I decide to put a background on I'll put a picture of that on later on. Okay so if you've got a gourd or if there's one in your local supermarket and you want to have a go um, then you know just a, a quick easy little drawing with a few nice reds, oranges and browns and uh, have fun with it. Let me know how you get on in the comments below. I think what I'm going to do with mine now um, is I'm going to pop it in the bottom oven and let it dry out completely so that another year I can have it still as a dried um, you know, gourd to draw again another time. So all I need to do is leave it in the bottom oven for a few days to let it dry out. Okay, so thanks for watching and bye for now.